So, uh, Marcus Conti here, former sanitation enforcement agent with the uh, city of New York City, city of New York City. And so it's uh, September 25th, 2017. The Department of Sanitation, the lawyers for the Department of Sanitation and the uh, New York State Division of Human Rights have until November 1st. They have about another six weeks to answer the claim. Of course, they'll try everything they can to get out of it, you know, postpone, delay, delay, delay. <clears throat> and there's really no reason for that. The corporate counsel, I think I mentioned it in a, a separate video, is, um, you know, is basically an army of lawyers. There's probably, just in one location alone, I think they have like 2,000 lawyers. So when you really think about it, the, the grounds for for slowing things down, you know, is is ridiculous. It's like I'm fighting, you know, single-handedly, three separate courts and two thousand lawyers, and and they're and they're they're swamped. So, it's just ridiculous. There's no end to the to the the level of deception and corruption within this organization. So we keep fighting. But this is a video that I didn't want to make. Um, you know, I, I wanted to talk about, um, just walk around a little bit, <clears throat> think better when you're walking around, but is the, uh, what is, what are the damages, you know, what, like, what, what's the damage when someone firstly discriminates against you and then, you know, and then in that process you start speaking the truth a little bit and you reveal a little bit about yourself and you start to, um, you know, talk about the other levels of corruption. In this case, it was a 10-ticket quota. And you say to yourself, well, what are the, what are the damages or something like that? <clears throat> and I, I'll, I'll tell you what they are, you know. It almost feels like, I, I mean, I've, uh, I've never been a victim of, you know, rape or anything like that. But it, it, certainly, it certainly feels like that, you know, the, 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 the event itself is devastating, but then when you couple that with the fact, it gets even worse because the agencies that are set up to do it, to take care of this sort of thing and to investigate it, um, New York State Division of Human Rights, the various EEO departments within the Department of Sanitation, they don't do anything. They don't, you know, they investigate half half-heartedly and then they look at you and say, well, you're a you know, you're a middle-aged white person. You couldn't possibly have been discriminated against. And um, it, you know, it, it it makes it makes you feel depressed. You know, it makes you feel um, uh, degraded. You know. You know, and uh, in the in the beginning, it's it was, you know, I cried, I weeped. <laughs> you know, I'd watch commercials and I'd weep. <laughs> and then. Um, you know, every time I thought about it, I got really angry. I got really, like, really, really resentful. And and, uh, and this has been going on for two years now, you know. And I'm forced, you know, I'm forced. What You know, you may say to yourself, well, why don't you let go of it? But how could you if, 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 if the only way you could, justice can be served and restitution can be, uh, acquired is by fighting, 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 where no no lawyers will take this case. And I'll tell you why. Because most of the lawyers in the city of New York, especially in a case like this where it's, I, I hate to use the term reverse discrimination, but that's, you know, essentially what it is. And if they try a case like this in a, you know, in Supreme Court, you know, and really push against the city and the Department of Sanitation, they'll have problems later on. So. Uh, in terms of getting fair judgment, you know, in, in court against uh, or in front of these judges. So there's this, um, that the ju that the, the lawyers don't want to represent you because they, they have a fear of retaliation of their own. So you're kind of left out there to dry, you know, where, where I'm forced to relive these events over and over again with each passing process to have to not only relive the events, but have to learn all the laws and crap that surrounds, you know, 
bringing a case, the, the procedure uh, of bringing a case uh, to court, bringing a case to discrimination court, and then having to, you know, fight tooth and nail the letter of the law against an army of lawyers who play dirty, you know, who defend people who play dirty. So, you know, again, that's that's pretty much, it's been very, um, you know, I, I, I still have like nightmares, you know, wake up, you know, because I have to keep reliving it. I have to keep writing the story. I have to keep writing, you know, producing documents now because I feel like no one's listening. I'm bringing it to the public. So I have to I have to put that out in video and I have to, um, you know, almost on a daily basis and more than two years later, present these facts and this evidence to the court of public opinion, you, and to the actual courts that will have to, you know, rule on this. So, you know, inability, you know, to sleeplessness, I, I, I don't eat much, you know. When I'm thinking about this, and then I have to listen to the, I have to listen to the recordings of of the people who accuse me of all these uh, things, all these lies, and I have to, I have to sit there and I have to listen to it, and I have to weed through it, and then I have to, I have to defend myself over and over again, while these people just skate, you know. So, I really do, in many respects. Um, I wanted to make this video to, to express my newfound understanding of what it's like to be the victim of discrimination and retaliation and um, you know it's retaliation because of the the fact that you know I believe in equality I believe in, in, in um, equal opportunity I believe in, you know, I believed in the Department of Sanitation when I took what was advertised as a green job, keeping the city clean, and I, I pretty much swore to do that job. And it turned out to be just, a, you know, a ticket mill. And, you know, I'll also express another, you know, fear, a lot of fear, because uh, when you expose the city of New York in a huge bureaucracy, you know, these are, there's some nefarious characters, you know, and I, I still feel like even now I, I look into this camera and I'm looking behind me, you know, like sitting in a public park, I might get whacked, you know. Now, I do have reason to believe that I was, you know, being followed and harassed. I've been approached by the police now three times for things that don't really make sense you know like one one <clears throat> once I was uh, just recently like two weeks ago co a police came over to me I was sitting here in the park kind of doing something that um, helicopter flying overhead that's not for me but maybe who knows um, but I was sitting in the park and I and a, a, a police officer came over to me and said what are you doing what are you what are you operating a drone? I said, so what? What are you operating a drone? That's what the cop said to me. He pulled out his badge and he showed me his badge. And I showed him my iPad and I was taking pictures. Or another time uh, I was walking my neighborhood and I was surrounded by police. This is, this is, uh, those are the, the two that really stand out. There's another one that was kind of not so. Not so, uh, so I do have reason. <clears throat> I was surrounded by police, and I was, uh, in fact, frisked, handcuffed, and arrested. And I went through the process for an hour, and I was I was released with, with nothing. It was just, and they said you matched the description. And so, they were able to get in my pockets. They were able to finger, fingerprint me, and uh, so I do have reason to believe. Not just, not just paranoia, but uh, reason to believe that the retaliation continues. So, you know, that that's really my thoughts. I wrote down some other stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the loss of... Um, 
you know, the loss of enjoyment of life. It's like I, I was on a track, you know, I, I took the city job I, two years before, probably 2012. I took the test and I was excited to work for the city and maybe, you know, that's how I would, you know, retire. And now it seems like, it, it just seems like the, you know, the my, my zest for life kind of got sucked out of me. You know, so. But uh, that's all. Those are. I just wanted to put a video up of, you know, what what are the, what are the damages? What are the consequences? To being the victim of, you know, rampant discrimination and retaliation. And um, th those are not just my thoughts, but those are my experiences thus far. So thank you.